My name is Charles Derby. I'm a physician and the chief medical consultant for licensing and certification program in the Department of Public Health. Thank you for the opportunity to address the topic of peer review by testifying at today's hearing. The licensing and certification program, LNC, has broad responsibilities related to the st uh, state licensure and federal certification of 30 t different types of health facilities in California. The authority and role of licensing and certification in the oversight of hospital peer review process is somewhat limited. We do, uh, we do not have a specific statement of authority in federal or state statutes or regulations to look specifically at peer review and their quotes around peer review. We do have a number of regulations that give us the authority to look for and assure elements of professional review by peers, uh, but that is never specifically termed peer review. State and federal regulations do not dictate a specific format for the professional review by peers, only that the hospital and medical staffs have developed, implemented, and utilized a process that meets the regulations. Also, Evidence Code 1157 specifically prevents us from reviewing some documents such as peer review, and here the quotes are there in peer review in the statute. However, we do have the authority from Health and Safety Code 1279 to periodically inspect hospitals and review hospital documents, including practitioners' credential files to ensure that the hospitals are in compliance with the regulations. Title 22, specifically sections 70701 and 70703, clearly state that the hospital's governing body and medical staff must have in place processes to assure, one, that the health care providers on the medical staff are competent in their respective fields, worthy in character and in professional ethics that there is a self-government by the medical staff with respect to the professional work performed in the hospital, and that there are periodic meetings of the medical staff to review and analyze at regular intervals their clinical expertise. Three, that the medical staff establish controls that are designed to ensure the achievement and maintenance <coughs> of high standards for, of professional ethical practices, including a uh, provision that all members of the medical staff sh uh, be required to demonstrate their ability to perform surgical and other procedures uh, competently, and to the satisfaction of an approved committee or committees of the staff at the time of original application for appointment to the staff mm -hmm. and at least every two years <coughs> thereafter. And four, that the medical staff have in place and enforce their bylaws, rules, and regulations that, specif uh, that specify certain functions, including but not limited to uh, executive review, credentialing, and the assessment of medical staff privileges. There are also other listed obligations there that I'm not going to read to you. Also, the federal or CMS regulations at the conditions of participation for governing body, medical staff, and quality assessment and performance improvement specify that the credentials, competency, and performance of the medical staff members and other health care providers working in the hospital be reviewed by uh, competent members of the medical staff. Although not specifically termed peer review, taken in total, these sections of the state and federal regulations do allow licensing and certification surveyors to look for and analyze the processes that hospitals and their medical staffs have in place concerning credentialing and medical staff review for the quality of care provided. Whenever licensing and certification does a survey or an investigation, we pull a number of medical staff and or uh, allied health uh, staff credential files uh, for review. When we review these credential files, we do ask for the peer review documents. Sometimes, but not often, hospitals state that the peer review documents are protected under Evidence Code 1157. When that happens, we ask the hospitals to demonstrate that they have a peer review process in place <clears throat> that is competent with the, um, the state and federal regulations. 
as well as with their own bylaws and rules and regulations. Most often, the hospitals quickly realize that the only way they can demonstrate competence with their own governance documents and state and federal regulations is to show us peer portions of the peer review documents. Occasionally, when we are on a CMS survey, a hospital will hesitate to show us sufficient peer review documents, and we explain that we're prepared to stop the investigation or survey, notify CMS that the hospital did not allow us to follow the federal survey process. Hospitals know that this will put them on a fast track CMS decertification or 23 day decertification track and they'll lose uh, and close off all of their federal funds. We almost never have to go down that track. In California, most hospitals have uh, based their medical staff bylaws on one of three model bylaws. Each of these, the California Medical Association bylaws, the California Hospital Association model bylaws, the beta group model bylaws, has detailed descriptions of peer review and termed peer review that is consistent with all uh, applicable state and federal regulations. Also in California, the vast majority of hospitals are Joint Commission accredited, and the Joint Commission has detailed standards presented here earlier, particularly FPPE, Focused Professional Proficiency Examination, that are entirely consistent with state and federal regulations. When licensing and certification surveys uh, or investigations take place at hospitals, we always check to see that the hospitals are in, uh, following and enforcing their bylaws and the standards that they've adopted. So in short, we have some limitations on our uh, uh, observation of peer review. We have some limitations there in, in our both our authority and um, the, the tasks that we perform, but we do an, uh, our best job in enforcing peer review. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, you mentioned in your report that you gave to this committee that the hospital rainmakers are shielded from peer review, and the doctors who blow the whistle against the hospital or an incompetent doctor often find themselves subject to retaliation or a sham peer review. Huh? That's, different, doctor. Uh, that's not my report. Oh, that's a different doctor. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. 